Hey, kids, coaches, adults, dogs, pets, whoever's watching, we'll take <laughs> all your clicks. Welcome to another episode of Snap Tackle Pod. I'm Mick Shaver of KSHB 41. He's Dion Clisso of Preps KC. We're covering high school football in and around Kansas City, both Kansas and Missouri. What's going on, Dion? Just another week, man. Week five, you know, it. it you know, to make a famous movie quote, life comes at you fast and a football season comes at you fast. And we are season every year halfway through uh, a football season, officially on both sides of the state line of the regular season uh, by the end of this week. And uh, it's definitely it's definitely been an interesting year. Uh, we talked about the last few weeks, a lot of chalk in some places. A lot of teams you thought would be good are good. A few surprises um, and, you know, some some things that are happening in some places that it hasn't happened for a while, uh, like Blue Spring South. But uh, no, it's uh, definitely an interesting season. And um, this is a fun week because we have a lot of crossover games. And then even on the Missouri side, we've got some games where two teams in the same district, like Richmond and Lafayette County, are good enough to, you know, maybe be in the Final Four. And they're only <laughs> going to play into the 12th week of the season, probably. But they play in the regular season game this week. Yeah. No, it, it, it goes quick, I think, for all of us that, that watch it and all the parents and everything that want to savor all the moments. I think it might go slow for the players, right? <laughs> We've been going at it since July, right? Just scrimmaging, jambering, practicing. Some have two-a-days, right? And then you get to see you're hitting each other. I know, I, know, I know the ones in my house always always loved it when, like, Thursday morning rolled around to where, like, okay, it's a, it's a lighter practice. You get your team dinner and then the game and the weekend. Uh, those those Tuesday Wednesdays can get very long. Uh, th those practices, I know. Well, look, I love football. It's my business. There's no doubt about that. But um, I'm a, I'm more of a baseball guy. You could you can put you can put to bed the loss and go on to the next game, and you don't you don't spend all this time. And uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that uh, somebody was asking me was like, well, "What do you think about Mahomes?" And I'm like, I'm like, the problem we have as a nation among many is that we talk about football for 365 days a year. And there are networks dedicated to doing that. Some that are just exclusively football networks and others that are, that just choose to do that. And because of that, you have to invent things to talk about, you yeah. know, like we cover a hundred some teams. So there's plenty of things to talk about each week. There's no doubt about that, but when there's only 32 NFL teams and 365 days, you have to fill 24 hours a day with information and talk and that breeds itself to just, you know, dumb things being said, second guessing, all that kind of stuff. It's part of the reason why I think I love baseball coaches because the really good ones are just like, yeah, we lost today or we won today and they go on the next day. And there are, there are many football coaches who succeed because they have seven days to get ready and mm -hmm. fail because they have seven days yeah. to get ready. Yeah. <laughs> there That's are plenty of coaches point. who can, who can coach themselves out of a victory by Wednesday, and there are plenty of coaches that if you give them seven days, they're going to beat you. If you give them fourteen days, they're going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we love because it's, it's just it's regimented, right? That's why we love football so much. I mean, it's three hundred sixty-five days out of the year, and in and in high school, you're guaranteed only nine games. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, in Kansas and Missouri, and in what college twelve, uh, seventeen now in the NFL, but that's still not a lot. But for, that's not for all the talk, we give it seventeen days out of three sixty-five. Isn't a lot, but we got it. You know, high school on Friday, college on Saturday, NFL on Sunday. Got some big games that kind of book in those in the NFL on, on Thursdays and Mondays. And then once that's all said and done, you're almost wrapped around to Thursday of the next week. And so, uh, don't even start on the it's fun on the Thursday me. games because I lost my fantasy game because I forgot to change out people. And it was like I was going to get pizza to watch the Chiefs on. I, I started Thursday. Keenan Allen and Harrison Butker. Oh, we both and, have them. the same two guys. I did too. And the Chargers defense, which is maybe just as bad. <laughs> Those are the two guys I started, and uh, I don't think I would have won anyway. I, I mean, the, uh, I had Ryan suck up on my bench and. He just scored me a few more points. Luckily, I had the the Bucks defense would score me a ton of points. But uh, yeah, I didn't lose, but I didn't compete because I was it was seven ten. I'm sitting down eating my uh, pizza, and uh, I will give a, a free plug here. We just opened in Blue Springs a Marco's Pizza. Okay. Had had never had it before. I'm a fan. Um, light on the sauce, heavy on the cheese, which is how I like it. I, I we just tried them out, yeah, and uh, we were we were. Uh, very much in the same thing of a lot of people in Blue Springs is there was a lot of people 
sitting around waiting for their pizza on Thursday night, getting ready for the Chiefs. But uh, shout out to Marco's Pizza. If you'd like to be a sponsor, uh, uh, Brian at PrepsKC.com, uh, please uh, contact him. We do not. We won't, we won't even bill you for those last 30 seconds there, right? No. Those, those, those <laughs> it's all free. All free all here right. from the Xfinity. The PrepsKC studio is powered by Xfinity. Yeah. As always. All right, let's get to it. Let's start with last week first, uh, Deanna, on the Missouri side. I think the story of the week last week and maybe the story of the year is Blue Springs South, right? You have a team that was winless in 2021, correct? Yes. And then did they win? How many did they win in 2020? One. So one won. win over the past two years. And they now won they have three, three wins, three wins four weeks. In- and one of them coming over, one of the better teams in the city on the Missouri side, Ray Peck last week, 52 34. Yeah, outscored them 42 7 in the second half. That's um, crazy. You know, it's a it's a weird deal. They're you, not a weird deal. You never know what's going to happen with 16, 17, 18 year old kids. That's definitely a, a given. I, I I will relay a story. Bob Glasgow, if you're not familiar with Bob Glasgow is, uh, you didn't follow any wrestling in this town for the last 20 years because yeah. uh, he won 13 state championships at Oak Grove, you know, 50 some, 60 some state champions, individual. His first year was 1984. Um, he was a first-year head coach at Oak Grove and 23, 24, I think. He's 20, 23, I think. They, they, Oak Grove had been a decent program, had been in the top, you know, finished in the top 10 several years and that kind of stuff, had some good wrestlers. They go down, his first year as coach, they, everything goes, he tells me, he's like, we had guys, you know, like people who were supposed to win in other brackets, you know, that would have cost us points and, you know, getting pinned in the first round. He goes, everything falls into place, and they win it his first year. And he told me about eight championships in, he goes, I don't know if we're sitting at the number we're at if we didn't win it the first year. He goes, because everything, you know, I got listened to a lot more as Mm -hmm. a second-year head coach than a lot of guys did because we had won the championship. I think back now to that first week at Blue Spring South, they get up big on Lee Summit, and they had not closed out games or come from behind on teams at all the last two years. That was not in their DNA. Lee Summit comes back, cuts it to four, and is, you know, just, you know, third quarter is just dominating the game. They come back, score three touchdowns, one of them, uh, you know, turn them over, win that game. Go to play Rockers next week. Rockers just beats them up. The next week, they get into shootout, down 18 in the fourth quarter with six minutes to go against Park Hill, come back and win that game. And then last week, down 17 at the half, outscore Ray Peck 42-7. Belief is a funny thing. It, it, it doesn't matter what type of athlete you are, whether you're a, a, a Royals team in 83 that had no business, or in 2003 had no business winning 83 games. Yeah. That was not that good. The, the pitching was – you think our pitching is bad now, you should go watch that team that I, I did that had that won 83 games. It, 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 belief is just a weird deal, and I think that's what's going on in Blue Spring South. They have good players. They're playing well. They have a very good coaching staff. Uh, Alan Wilmus was able to bring a lot of assistance with him. That helps any type of transition. Uh, but they are believing they play Grain Valley this week. I think they probably should win that game. They got Liberty North next week. I, I don't know if they've got the horses to do that, and uh, but we'll see. They've got a good formula. They've got a really good offense. They got a lot of talented players on offense. Defensively, they're going to give up some points, but they got two really good cornerbacks. They turn you over two, three times a game, get that extra possession, yep. and and play it that way. So hats off to that team, and uh, it's it's definitely I can tell you right now, based on our social media and our traffic, that Blue Spring South is a hot topic amongst their fans. I mean, they are back, which is well. I mean, it's a I don't know giant, or I don't even yeah, know if they I were ever asleep. You know, some some down years, but it's a it's a giant of a program. It's one that can uh, is has proven it can t- can contend for state titles year in year out. I don't know if their interest from their fan base was this good in 2014, 15 when they were winning a state championship. I, I think that the fan base had become a little jaded and spoiled. And I think they appreciate it. Well, think about it. This they they the last time they were ranked was 2017 at the end of the year, when they finished five and seven because they made it to a district championship game. And they yeah. knocked off two teams in St. Louis. So I mean, it's been since these sophomores were in elementary school. Yeah. So these kids don't know about know about blue springs i mean they you know your kids are they don't know about last week let alone right. five six seven years ago yeah no no H- history isn't always appreciated uh uh amongst the youth 
Um, hey, look, speaking of surprise teams, look, Oak Park is 4-0. and Yeah. Uh, the Northmen are 4-0. and And look, they take on Platte County this week, and, you know, betting is legal in Kansas now. If you had a line on this game, <laughs> they might be favored in this one. They've already beaten Grain Valley, who's – who themselves has beaten Platte County. Yeah, you know, I, and that hats off to Grand Valley last week. That was an impressive win. Platte County looked really good beating North Kansas City the week before, and I thought, okay, they're going to get it going here, and I think I picked Platte County in that game. Um, but Oak Park has done what a program that's trying to take that next step. You know, they've been at the three, four, you know, five-win spot a couple times in the last yep. four or five years, but if they're going to take that big step forward, they're hammering the teams they should hammer. Yep. And then they beat and made the plays against the Green Valley. And this is a, a team filled with juniors. If they go 5-0, and oh, they've got a shot at 6-7 wins. It's a wide-open district. Who knows what they're going to do in the postseason? you got North Kansas City, Black County, um, all those teams in that district. But Oak Park is definitely proving they have a formula. They play good defense. They run the ball. Um, they do all, this, all the little things well. And when they beat Green Valley, that said to me, you know, this isn't the best Green Valley team in the last few years, but that's – a you know, Grain Valley David Alley has a has a brand and they do things a certain way. And Ken Clemens said, that's the kind of team we want to be. They're mm. they're relentless, they're physical, their effort is consistent all the way through the game. That's the kind of team we want to be. And they and they beat them. And they play another program like Grain Valley that is used to you know playing hard no matter what the situation is. And so this is a great test for them. Yeah. Over on the Kansas side, hey, our our, our Bishop Miege and St. Thomas Aquinas back here. It's almost like they get back <laughs> in the same classification for a and they both raise up like the undertaker out of the coffin right and they're ready to they're ready to just take on each other it seems like they're on a collision course uh for each other well i'm, I'm impressed with me asia's done uh you know last week they just dominated uh st james and, and aquinas has done the same thing they've gone out and dominated everybody i, I i'm looking forward to see how me does this week against rock um it's it's a a team that's probably got more size than them uh more physicality nothing against me i think me is has got good size. It's just a 4A team versus a, a class six team on the Missouri side and a rock team that looks a lot like the rock teams of old. Um, so that'll be a good test for them. Aquinas just keeps taking care of their business. I, I this may be Aquinas. I mean, Aquinas may be the team to beat. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't I think, think that they are the in the EKL. I mean, they've already taken care of Northwest and yeah. West, two, two good teams there. They too play uh, rockers here in the next couple of weeks. They yes. Have, but Miege Rockers next week, and then and then uh, Aquinas Rockers after yes. that, and then it's uh, Aquinas Miege. Yeah, the, 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 the next three weeks uh, for those two teams are definitely uh, going to show us a lot. We got holy about, wars all over the place. Oh yeah, it's it, you know hats off to to Miege and Aquinas for playing Rockers. I mean, Rockers had to play Bentonville last week. They're not having to do as much of that uh, like they used to in the past. I mean, uh, the Liberty Norths and and the Ray Pex are playing them out of the Suburban Conference. You know, Lisa West played them. Uh, the last couple of years, but uh, no, it's a, uh, the rock is a team loaded with juniors. And, and I think they're going to be pretty good at the end of the season. Uh, but the, you know, they're one and three right now, but their losses are to Bentonville, Arkansas, <laughs> right back in Liberty North. And they yeah. beat blue Springs South. I mean, so uh, they're not ranked this week. I um, in the, in the state rankings and, and mainly because I think that a lot of us on the state rankings, we have a heart, you know, we know they're good. But you have a hard time ranking a one and three team. Yeah, you got to you got to win. You got to win games, some, and then you, if they're as good as you think they are, don't they'll make that up on the back end, and they'll get back to five hundred and above it. Yes. And well, we talked about Blue Springs South being ranked at five and seven at the end of the year uh, in twenty seventeen. That's kind of one of those things. They went on the road and won two playoff games against teams that were ranked, and so that got them in the rankings that year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get to the big three games of the week. And let's start on the uh, Missouri side this week. Um, and I guess it's not really sides this week because you have the <laughs> crossovers, right? With yes. The, uh, Blue Valley schools taking on some of those suburban schools. Let's start with, uh, let's see on what would be Blue Valley Northwest. It's at least Summit North. It's correct? at least Summit North. Yeah. We're calling that a Missouri uh, big yes. three. If the home okay. team is Missouri, that's a, that's a Missouri big three. Uh, what a, what a game I think this is going to be. This you know, we were talking a little before we went on air, you know, Lee Summit played Lee Summit North pretty tough last week. And I think Lee Summit North is very good. I think defensively they're outstanding and that's going to keep them. It's going to be tough to beat them no matter who plays them because they're so good defensively. Offensively, uh, they're getting better. Um, you know, they're still playing two quarterbacks, which is wouldn't be my choice. Uh, but, you know, they've got two pretty good quarterbacks. So <laughs> it helps that you got Elijah yeah. Leonard and, and Max Ford. So, um 
Blue Valley Northwest, though, Grant Stubblefield, again, last week, 300 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, you know, he's they're, – they're going to him. We'll and touch they on need Simone's him. here in a second, too. Yeah. probably won't be the last time you mention Grant Stubblefield. But, uh, no, I, I, this is a fantastic matchup. I mean, we're going to have coverage all over the place on this one. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice matchup of styles, uh, two programs that have – in two programs that traditionally 10 years ago, if I'd have said, hey, Blue Valley Northwest and Lee Summit North, you said, who's going to that game? Why would anybody yeah. go? And now it's yep. two of the top five, six programs in the Metro. Yep. I like this one on the Missouri side. You have uh, Richmond – Going to going Lafayette to County, Lafayette right? County on the road to Lafayette County, and that's and a Higgins. top five battle in class. Uh, yeah, yeah, class, class two. two. Yeah, that's a uh, you know, um, at the end of last year, the the voters in Missouri, and I am one of them, ranked Richmond ahead of Lafayette County, even though they beat them in the uh, regular season. season. Richmond came closer to beating Lamar than than Lafayette County did beating Lutheran St. Charles in the semis. And I think that's where the di divergence came Lafayette County had the rankings up on their weight room into I think March <laughs> I, <kept> those receipts. <laughs> I saw, I saw some pictures of that. And I, and as I, I told the rankings voters, we have a little chat group that we do. I said, for the, for the health of everybody that Lafayette County plays after a couple of weeks, I mean, they're hanging 60, they're averaging 60 points a game. I was they, like they the health of the four on uh, yeah. summit Christian last week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, summit Christian's down but they hung 74 on some of Christian. Uh, so for the health of all, all involved, you know, I think we're probably better off keeping Lafayette County in front of Richmond. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty close though. I mean, uh, Richmond played Van Horn, who was three and oh, that's a class 14 that had beaten William Christman uh, the week before and, and beat them. So Richmond, you know, they lost Keyshawn Elliott, uh, their outstanding uh, receiver, running back, play a little quarterback, play linebacker, did a little everything for them, but they've got a, a good group behind him and, uh, that's playing and the unfortunate part is Misha decided this year and not just in football uh, to put a lot of teams that were not in the same district that were in semifinals or championship games in the same district so mm -hmm. they're in the same district and it bleeds over to softball uh, there's two teams currently that have one loss in the state Columbia Rockbridge and Blue Spring South to each other and they're in the same district for the same like district. third year in a row yes yeah, so they're like the two best programs same district it makes no sense but it is what it is but uh, for Lavia County and Richmond, uh, it's probably the first of two meetings, and uh, whoever wins this one probably gets to play that game at home the next time around. That's what this yeah. was for. Yeah, the Lafayette County Huskers, by the way, and the Richmond Spartans. Yes, I love that. Uh, the, the Lafayette County, who originally were called Higginsville for the longest time, and yeah. then they changed their official school name to Lafayette County High School. Uh, about well, they probably brought in some other towns. Well, there. I think I think there was some blowback that not uh you know yes higginsville is the main town but uh there are plenty of people who live out in the county uh yeah. that that didn't feel represented makes sense um all right here we go uh last one we touched on it earlier but oak park and platte county how, how do you size this one up well i i think it's going to be you know what platte county team shows up you know they're young and they they are inconsistent you know they play great against north kansas city and then kind of get handled by grain valley and for and for oak park just keep doing what they're doing, you know, playing good. De their defense is outstanding. Play good defense, run the ball, control the clock. That's a Ken Clemens style team. Um, and just keep, you know, keep getting better each week. And uh, that's uh, th this is a game that you can see a lot of these two teams playing each other over the next few years. So um, it's going to be a good one. And I think if Oak Park wins this, they're, they're legit. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, all right. On the Kansas side here. Uh, look, Mill Valley uh, has uh, kind of a three-week stretch of, of of contenders they're playing in the Sunflower League. Last week, China Mission Northwest figured to be one, and they still might be, but Mill Valley dispatched of them. It was 51 to nothing. Um, and then this week, it's going to be Gardner uh, at Gardner, and you got the old flex bone. You got uh, mm -hmm. Dustin Laney over there at uh, at Gardner, and, and really, they've probably been the surprise of 6A in all of Kansas. There's only five 6A undefeateds left. By the way, there's only four 5As left, and they're matching up in this one, uh, Gardner and uh, Mill Valley. Yeah, you know, Gardner, the first couple of weeks, they played some teams that I wasn't stunned they beat, but they, you know, they they want to shoot out with Shawnee Mission East, who's not very good. Yep. But last week, against an Olathe West team, I think we all think is decent. Yeah. They 
kind of controlled the game. They got down a little early, but I mean, like a touchdown, but then just kind of came back and just really controlled it. I watched most of that game uh, on Spectrum and, and they just took control. Yeah, Flex they bone team. team. They, 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 they were in control. They won that game. What's the cardinal rule against the flex bone team? Don't, Don't get, get behind down. by oh, a couple this scores. This is a pass heavy flex bone team. Yes, yes, they do throw the ball. They've got yep. a letter. Is that I think is a uh, name? Elder. Uh, Elder. The yeah. Quarter, quarterback he tweeted at he tweeted at us last night because of the B union that wasn't up for B union game of the week, and I had to be like, patience. It's a big three game, <laughs> which was released this morning as we record this. So uh, Elder, no, he's fantastic. He's been he. he I like I said, I watched him that game last weekend. Uh, well, and they, he's got this one circled because he his season was ended last year in game one at home against Mill Valley uh, towards ACL. So it's great to see uh, to see him back. And they've yeah they've got some athletes there, and it's going to be uh, it, it's here, here's the, the I don't know about how much the su- Sunflower has seen the flex bone right the EKL is like oh, yeah okay. well we've East when Delaney was there they did for, for a few years, years now but... uh, Mill Valley seen it right they prepared for it because they play Aquinas every year uh pretty much in the semifinals uh so it's it's an offense they've seen like i said a little different wrinkles so they get uh, they can well the ball. You, you know it's uh you know the flex bones running well it, when delaney has a quarterback who can throw the ball because there was at least two of those touchdowns where the dude was by himself 20 yards down yeah. the field way through a time that's when the flex because everybody bites and elder just went and it was easy money easy money i, I will say this the mill valley defense is scary Scarier maybe than ever this year. I mean, they shut down Malik Oatis to 25 yards rushing on 12 carries. He had seven more yards receiving, and it was just smothering. A little stat for you, Mill Valley has had 25 three and outs or better this season uh, defensively out of like 30. You know, drives. for a guy wearing a Mill Valley sweatshirt, I know, right, right, it's right, shocking right. that you would know that defensive stat. We'll move on. It's almost like you had a kid who graduated and played defense and maybe another kid who's still playing defense. Yeah, it's, it's almost like that. <laughs> uh, we, we move on here. Uh, our next big three game of the week is going to be another one of those hybrid games. Rockers playing at Bishop Miege. We're going to call that a Kansas game because it's played on the Kansas side. This should be a great win. I, I think it's going to be, I mean, man, Rockers schedule. I mean, there's no, there's no, yeah. there's no FCS opponents here, um, Dion. It is. It is heavy hitter after heavy hitter every week. Yeah, and they're not – I mean, last week was the first time they really kind of got controlled by somebody. Now, I think Bentonville's pretty good. Um, yeah, Bentonville's just come up here, and they've eaten over the last yes. uh, few yes. years Yes, I mean, here. the last team – you know, the last team to beat Liberty North in the regular season was Bentonville last year. <laughs> I they mean, so up, that's – They've beaten Mill Valley. They've beaten yeah. Rockhurst. It's a uh, – yeah. It's a good, so that's great a, program that, down there. Outstanding program. I, I think it's, it's going to be a good to see kind of an apples-to-apples apples type of thing. You know, and, and Miege hasn't played a team with size like that. I mean, Blue Eye Northwest has got some nice size, but, you know, not not like this. I mean, uh, it's just definitely a situation where this is a step up for Miege, a good test for them. You know, if they even if they lose, no no big deal to them as long as they come out healthy because that will help them down the line in 4A because they're not going to see anybody that looks like Rockhurst in 4A um, down the line. So that's yeah. going to be a good one for them. Yep. Uh, good points there. Yeah, Rockers. I just I just look at their schedule every week and just want to run it down. After <laughs> after me age, it's uh, uh, Aquinas at home, Blue Springs at home, at St. Louis University High School, which I don't know. I'm sure they're they're good. They're okay. They got off to a bad start, but they're okay. Blue Springs got their first win last week, so I, I think I think the Blue Springs Salou might be their little breather game. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They deserve it. They got. They, 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 they need some breathers uh, in there. Uh, and then, last but not least, help me out here as I get back to the page. Staley the at Blue Kansas Valley State. West. Who is it? Staley at Blue Valley West. Yeah. Which, when I saw that on the page, I said to myself, "Oh, someone said, why don't you let Josh Corkenmeyer play a game against his former coach, Steve Rampy?" To which, oh, okay. I thought to myself, that that's a great little intrigue game, you know. And then I asked Rampy about it. He goes, uh, we didn't have anything to do with that. They just put us together. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you know, two two teams. Staley is a young team and, you know, got a good win last week. And they're playing, you know, they, they've they been competitive in all their games. Uh, lost, to, you know, at least some in North and um, beat Blue Springs. And definitely a team to keep an eye on. Blue, Blue Valley West, since they lost in week one to Aquinas, has looked like the team we thought they would. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, they get to, you know, all kinds of guys on the sidelines watching them play. Uh, Mahomes last week. I would get, you know, it's funny. Say, whenever you play Blue Valley West, you have a chance of uh, Mahomes showing up at your game. So I get text last week during the game. 
why is is Mahomes? Does, why would he be at the Blue Valley Southwest game? That's and I was why. like, and I said, I texted maybe somebody who worked for the Star. Nagy's kid plays at Blue Valley West. I didn't say this. You would have known that if you had watched Snap or listened to Snap Tackle or Pod we go. Right, a couple yeah. weeks earlier. The quarterback. He's the quarterback. You know, maybe that's why Nagy and and uh, Mahomes were at the game. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah, the information is on the there. road this week, so they'll leave on Saturday. So I don't know if a, a Friday yeah. night thing is is encouraged for the players because last week, obviously, they had played on Thursday, had a day off on Friday. So I don't know if he's going to be following Nagy around to all the Blue Valley West games, but that's a that's a cool deal, though. For, well, they uh, also said that the start get, the story get, said get he, that gate up there, get uh, like ten thousand fans out there to see my uh, one one of the guys in the up in the office. His kid played at Christ Prep, and he went to a Christ Prep game, which is a the homeschool team that doesn't play in they play teams like you know center and yeah. places like that but they and they're actually a pretty solid team um but they don't play in the Keisha they don't play in the postseason they're unsanctioned by the Keisha or Misha yeah and Blue Valley's bounced back after that kind of lopsided loss to Aquinas in week one a couple lopsided wins the past yeah. two weeks they they, they we, a lot of us thought they they might be the toast of the uh, EKL this year the best team they still could be I, you know, in 6A, I think they they're a team. They'll be right up there. Yeah, I think in 6A, they're a team to watch. I mean, uh, the, there's yeah. no doubt. And um, I think 6A is wide open on the on the eastern side. So they I definitely could be a team. Western side, too, right? You see yeah. Kirby already losing Manhattan. Oh, I I still look at the rankings. And I see Manhattan up, up top, and I'm like, I guess somebody's got to be one. I mean, but I just don't buy into Manhattan. <laughs> they beat Derby. Well, so. and you got to remember, which side Northwest is up on the uh, 6A. Yes, uh, I think uh, they'll be. Classification, classification now, too. They're very good. Yeah, so I think they will. And uh, it, 6A is going to be wide open. It's going to be, I mean, if we you asked me who was going to be the cha- state championship game right now, I could probably come up with about 10 different combinations. You really could. I mean, you could take the Blue Valley Northwest, the Blue Valley West from uh, the e Blue Valleys look good. Um, and then you could take the the Olathe North, the Gardner, oh, yeah. right? Uh, who's to say Olathe like, uh, West doesn't get it together down the line? I, you know, I mean... Another it's, one, I, I mentioned the Mill Valley Trio, Late the South coming up. I know they had that, uh, uh, what they they beat Lawrence, tough loss to Shawnee Mission Shawnee North. Shawnee North. Don't sleep on them because they oh. gave Late the North the game. Uh, they gave, yeah, for South three quarters, they were, right yeah, and they got I mean, D1 players. Yeah. Uh, Late the South, Shawnee Mission North, two teams that I don't think will make it to a state championship game, but you don't want to play them in the first or second round of the playoffs. That's for sure. Blue Valley North uh, learned that lesson last year. Late the South got the, uh, oh, yeah. At the win uh, over them. All right, here we go. I know you're going to give me a list of Simone Award candidates um, this week, Dion. Who does your give me give me one name? The first when I say Simone Award, who's the, what's the first name that pops into your head? Right now, it's got to be Grant Stubblefield. I mean, uh, he's they're leaning on him, and he's put up the numbers. Uh, and that, that's definitely you know, and Kendrick Bell at, at Park Hill is going to put up some huge numbers because yeah. they're always in shootouts and then you know a kid cash parker at blue spring south is putting up big numbers as well and of course sam van dyne they haven't needed sam van dyne to go out and throw up uh you know 30 times a game this year but he's definitely one of those guys so those are kind of the guys that i think that to keep an eye on um and then there's you know some filling some guys like a hayden jay and um you know just players on really good teams uh so it's you know it's going to be interesting to see. It'll start. We're going to start focusing down on that here in the next few weeks, uh, yeah. and see what the Simone guys are. But uh, no, I think you know Stubblefield's putting up a, you know 180. And they're winning too, right? They're two and one. I only yes. lost to Aquinas, which hey, it's a that's allowable right there. And and look, they're keying on him. It's M- Mikey pauly has gone. They have a, a great yes. quarterback back, but I mean, you have to, you have to know these defenses are game planning a, a, around. Stubblefield, I want to say number two. Is he two this year? I can't remember, but uh, he was a running back. He was still putting up huge numbers. He was either two last year and five this year or five last year and two this year. I have to go back and look at the video highlights that we have to to figure it out. But uh, no, 300 yards, four touchdowns last week and and long touchdowns. He tried to hide. He changed his jersey number. He tried to hide. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and not just like, oh, they blocked it well and he's in that open and he runs away from people. He's like stiff arming guys and running guys over. I mean, if you there's some guys who play football and you think, oh, they look good in their pads. Go watch Josh Manning and and Grant Stubblefield play basketball. You see what kind of athletes and how put together these guys are when they're playing I mean, basketball. Look, 
this this could be probably we, we've had some great two sport you know basketball football athletes in this town for a long time but this might be monte harrison right comes, comes yeah. to mind this might be the best shot at somebody winning both the simone and the Dorena. oh yeah for stubblefield yeah no doubt yeah manning so, doesn't Manning manning's more just a, like a six man at least he was last year he probably start this year for least Summit. he doesn't he's not quite the the key part of what Lee Summit did last well, I mean, year. Stubble's the, Stubble's the reigning 6A player of the year. In yes. Basketball. Yes. So, yeah. And that's, again, team. that's another move out Northwest. I mean, look, uh, they won state football last year. That's a basketball school, right? And they're going to be up uh, continuing each and every year yes. in yes. basketball as well. And so uh, that's, that's part of the equation, right? You got to have the numbers. You also got to be on a, on a great team. Yeah. And I think, you know, in football, definitely that the blue out Northwest is going to win a lot of games. And this is the, you know, Hey, if he goes goes and hangs 150 plus on a Lee Summit North defense, that's a that's a big number on a really good team. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're they're the kind of team that is you know shutting down like Parker South's rushing attack, which is one of the better in the in the city. Shut them down two weeks ago. Yeah. So I I, I love this week, Dion. As we kind of wrap this up, the, the Kansas v Missouri games. They tried it. What several years ago with the Sunflower, Sunflower League, League. It, it did not go well, Suburban Sunflower, but it works with the EKL. And honestly, I think you took some of the top Sunflower League teams and or just made it for, you know, every league. You got you got one bye week, right? And then uh, broker some sort of deal. I, I love the cross state because we have all these rankings that combine the two the two states. Yeah, I don't do that. Right? Uh, they're not separate. That. We put them together, but you never really know. Um, but these games, even just a one week deal can give you some clarity and, and, and kind of give you a gauge on, okay, who really are the best teams in the city? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, the record show, I don't, I don't do any top 25s. I don't, it's, it, that's your stance right there. That's your clickbait, you clickbait, no top 25 clickbait. That's all it is. It's clickbait. Hey, you like clicks though, right? right? I do like clicks, but I don't like clickbait. Um, so yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, I love to see. I'd love to see more of it. Um, and before we go, I will do a hat reveal. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I forgot all about that. Where's your yes, way? yes. Hat, hat Last week, I got to do something. It, uh, it, I guess the the president said it's post pandemic time now. I did something that I haven't done in even pre pandemic, just because I don't get out and get a chance to do this. I stopped off at Center High School and hung out in the coaches' room for about an hour and a half talking to coaches. And came home with a nice. new hat. Uh, um, there's also a stocking cap. So when it gets cold, I have a blue stocking cap as well. Oh, look at that. So uh, yellow jackets, yellow hat. It says yellow jackets on the back. Oh, you see yeah. that? Um, Coach DeLong and his staff. And, and you know, it, when we get more deeper into this and like you're a sports director, I'm doing this. You don't get the time you did when you were just a new reporter covering, you know, where you could just go hang out in coach's office. And that's where you really get to know the the guys and get to know about the teams uh you know joseph vick their outstanding quarterback stopped by and um as they were going through weights and doing stuff and i i got to be introduced to him uh he's really tall by the way in case you're wondering he so looks tall. he's six five and he is yeah. i mean he looks the part I mean, that's uh, i mean i don't know i mean for delong i mean great choice to put him in a quarterback but i mean i had so many temptations to put it at receiver or defensive end i mean geez he's so big They've got the, the one-two punch of him and Ja'Cory Love at, at uh, uh, tailback. And, and you know, a lot of the the kids at uh, at center, one to 22 might be the best talent in 4A uh, in the city in, in on the Missouri, or class four in Missouri on that side. Um, but they do a fantastic job. And, I, you know, got to talk with a lot of their assistants and hang out. And, you know, we talked a lot of stuff I like talking about, like law and order uh, and things like that. And, and just – and talk football and, and, you know, need to do more of that. There's no doubt, but I appreciate as we start the hat collection back up and um, you know, I've got some old we're, ones. We're all that, about payola, right? Yes. Yes. Not, uh, not just the town, but also the you know, under the table gifts. Yes. As you're wearing a Mill Valley sweatshirt. Did you pay for that Mill Valley sweatshirt? Uh, this was a birthday present. Yes. Okay. So you didn't pay for it. Money in your house, no, paid but for. everything else I paid for. Yeah. So, uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I love, you know, I've, I've got some good ones. I, you know, someone be gifted me a Mill Valley hat that I have, and I may have to break that out yeah. again, but uh, I have a Blue Spring South hat uh, that I love because it's from the 2011 state championship team. Uh, it also has the old S on it, uh, not the new S. Uh, those well, those at Blue Spring South. A campaign here, kind of like a hat go fund me. 
what what of, of the 120 or whatever schools in the area that, that we cover, what percentage of schools do you have a hat from? Oh, not even like maybe seven or eight percent. Not even that. I mean, I've got like we've got Smithville, Raytown South, Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, Mill Valley Center, um, Lincoln Prep. Okay, we got we got to get you some more. Okay. I need some Kansas hats. Is what I need. I need some Kansas hats. You know, uh, just to throw that out there. Blue Valley West had a very nice looking stocking cap that Josh Corkemeyer was rocking last year in the Got playoffs. Uh, very well done. Um, that was, that was popular. Oh, I, also, I have North Kansas city. I'm sorry. Team, you got to put that hat on. Yes. I, I North Kansas city. I have a um, Leon Douglas uh, was very kind a few years ago. I, because I said our own Ryan Wallace love the, you know, the North town, it just says North town yeah. on it. Love that hat. So I ended up getting three hats uh, that I gifted to one to Ryan Wallace and another to Cole Young, and I have the 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 pirate, the you know skull and crossbones one nice. that they that they're that's kind of their defenses. Um, I have that hat. It's a flat bill though, so I'm not a I'm not a flat bill guy. So it's tough to you know work that. I, I was, Free, I was uh, kind of like you know you don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth there. I know. No, I have that hat. So yeah, North Kansas City's the other one. But no, I'd love some love some more Kansas hats. Uh, Mill Valley's the only one I have uh, on the Kansas side. And, wow. and yeah, to work on that. Somehow I got that one. I'm not sure how that happened. I don't know. Maybe some guy wears a Mill Valley sweatshirt. Right, throw out your email address and then uh, coaches, <laughs> you can email him and get his real address and just send him a, a hat or just say, hey, get your butt off. The I will. It, it, in the and, studios. Come out to our, uh, yeah, our that's games. We'll the one thing. Whatever that, you want. That's what Center did last year. And I really, it was like I, last week I had a meeting over on state line. Uh, did not cross the state line and go bet, you know, anything, but uh uh, I was over there off state line at a meeting and texted DeLong and he said, come on over and, and uh, went down there in the, in the, in the bowels of center high school there by the nice. locker room and the coaches, good old coach's office and sat on a really nice leather love seat that they had in there. And he, as he said, it's the most comfortable place in there and uh, nice. chatted with those guys. And I, I am willing to come and hang out. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put the time in uh, to do that. Uh, but, uh, and, and, you know, unfortunately, we don't have quite as much swag on the on the Preps KC side to kind of trade off. I've got a little bit left. We, we're, we're kind of down low supplied. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it's uh, it definitely. I, I love this hat. I wore it to Costco yesterday here and in over in Independence, and so representing Center High School there. But uh, no, it's this is fantastic. I mean, the 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 blue and yellow. I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of yellow as a general rule. I see yellow okay. cars. I can't stand. But this is a good looking hat. There's nothing wrong with this. You call it gold. That's what they always gold. do. Gold. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, of Mizzou fan. We wind down. A lot of hats. <laughs> we wind down the show. We done? We, any more on the hats or? No, no. That's this is like I said. I, I, I it's fantastic. It's yeah. It's I a good love hat. It. I love. Ba I love the. I love it when coaches wear the baseball hat. I'm not a visor guy, so don't send me your visors. I'm not a visor guy either. Yeah. Visor guys are weird. All right. So. Dion, thanks for the time. Coach DeLong, thanks for the hat, providing content for our little Snap Tackle Pod show. <laughs> Enjoy the games out there in Kansas and Missouri in week four, week five, whichever one it is. Uh, check out prepskc.com for scores. Like I said, it's a pastime at our games. Every ha halftime we look up and we're like, oh my gosh, this team's beating this team. It's a lot of fun. Uh, up to date scores, up to the minute scores on that website. And check out Dion. And uh, we'll have this week. I believe it'll be Haley. Haley, again. Friday night. Haley this week on uh, Under the Lights. SHB 41 for the Under the Lights show at 10 o'clock. That's all I have for Dion. I'm Mick. We'll see you next time on Snap Tackle Pod.